Hey guys, the goal of this video today is to be able to uh, graph and describe a scatter plot, as well as understand the difference between something called an explanatory variable and a response variable, okay? For a couple definitions to start off the day. What is a scatter plot? A scatter plot shows the relationship between two quantitative variables. So you've seen scatter plots before. There's an x-axis and a y-axis, or I should have said a y-axis and the x-axis the way I drew it. But we can look at two quantitative variables and establish if there's a relationship between them. One quantitative variable we could look at is how much time are people spending on schoolwork? Time is a quantitative variable. If I had 100 people in the room who were students, I could ask them, how much time a week are you spending on your schoolwork in math or social studies or whatever? And then grade. Grade is another quantitative variable, okay? I could ask them also, what is their grade? And I could plot that and see if there's a relationship. Now, a friendly reminder, Why is time a quantitative variable? It's a quantitative variable because if I asked all of you how much time have you spent on your stats homework, I could take those numbers and I could average it. It makes sense to do that. The same as the grades. If I would look at all of your grades, I could find the average grade. It makes sense to do that. Oftentimes, quantitative variables have um, units with them. So here we could say minutes, the grade, we could have a percentage as the unit. All right, let's move on to our next definition. What is a response variable? A response variable is a variable that measures an outcome or a result of a study. Before I get more in depth on that, let's talk about what an explanatory variable is first. An explanatory variable is the variable that we think explains or causes changes in the response. Now, let's talk a little bit more in depth. The explanatory variable in the relationship, so here, if you look up here, we have a relationship between two quantitative variables. The explanatory variable is the influencer. It's going to influence a result. Sorry, guys, too big there. Ah, I love technology. It's going to influence a result. We can leave it just like that. So what is the explanatory variable here? What's going to influence a result in this little example here? Is a grade gonna influence how much time? Or is your how much time you're gonna spend studying going to influence your grade? And how much time you're gonna spend studying, right? That's gonna influence your grade. So that's our explanatory variable. Now what you need to know is the explanatory variable is always plotted on the x-axis. Hey guys, my daughter just walked into the room. I had to pause, full disclosure. If I repeat something, I'm so sorry. So we're talking about this explanatory variable and the explanatory variable will always be plotted on the X axis. So that's this one right here. And then the response variable is the, is the, the result that you're looking at. Okay, I studied this much time. What was my result? My result in this case was my grade and that's always plotted on the Y axis. And we'll practice on a slide looking at the difference between an explanatory variable and a response. Now, the thing that you need to be clear is it's not always clear, okay? One thing is I could measure my wingspan, so tip of my finger to the tip of my finger across my body, right? And I could measure my height and I could plot that. And we would see a really nice linear relationship. Wingspan, height, okay? But how, you know, how long my wingspan is, that's not influencing my height. That's just the way I was made. There's no clear explanatory variable or response. And that does happen sometimes. And we just have to feel comfortable with that. Again, I'll practice with you so you can see another example. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's actually graph a scatter plot right now. So what we have right here is we have minutes jogging and then calories burned. So we see a relationship. Here's one person, they jog for five minutes, they burned six calories. Another person here jogged for 10 minutes, they burned eight calories, 10, 12, so on and so forth. So the first thing that we should probably do is we should probably 
figure out what one is the explanatory variable and which one is the response. And you can see the little spoiler over here, but what is influencing another? Well, hopefully you're thinking the minutes that you're jogging, those um, minutes that you're jogging, they are influencing how many calories you're gonna burn, right? The longer we jog, the more calories we're gonna burn. And our response then is our result. And that's the calories burnt. So we know, right, we know then if we're going to plot it, the x-axis is going to be that jogging time and the y-axis is going to be how many calories we have burned. Now what we want to do next is we want to plot that, okay? I want When I'm like doing my scale, just real quick, you want to look at the minimum and the maximum so you know how to scale that. So you can see I started at 4 and I went to 22 and I went by 2s. And then here for calories burn, minimum looks like six, maximum looks at 22. Again, it looks like I went by twos, okay? So let's go ahead and plot that. What is that gonna look like? Well, at five, that means I'm at five on the x-axis, so that's approximately right here, and six on the y-axis, five, six. And I'm gonna put a nice big dot right there. At 10, I'm at eight, so 10, eight. At 10, I'm at 12, so 10, 12. At 15, I'm at 15, so 15 is approximately right here, and 15 is approximately right here. At 20, I'm at 19, so that's about right. Let's see, make sure I have it right there. And then at 16, I'm at 20. Okay. And then finally at 22, I'm at 22. So there's my nice scatter plot right there. I wanna try to make all the points about the same size. That's just my preference. I think it looks better. Doesn't look misleading that way. Okay, so we have our nice scatter plot here of two quantitative variables with the explanatory variable being on the X axis and the response variable being on the Y axis. Our next goal for the day is we need to be able to describe that, okay? Now, I use, I use an acronym to describe, and that's SUDS, okay? The first S, that stands for shape, okay? And the type of shape that we normally see is either a linear scatter plot or a curved scatter plot, okay? That's the first thing that we see. So let's look in our example here. What do we see in our example? So this would be, hey, if I'm gonna draw a line through this, okay, line of best fit, how you probably learned it in like an algebra class, we call it actually a least squares regression line in statistics. But if I was gonna draw a line through this, I want approximately half the points above, half the points below. Is this gonna be a curved line or is this gonna be a straight line that I'm gonna draw through it? And this is gonna be a straight line, okay? It's not a curved line. So we say that this is linear. Give me a second. I can get over there. So in this example, for our shape, when we're describing the relationship between jogging and calories burned, we would say linear. The next thing is, if, is there anything unexpected? Unexpected, like do we have a lonely point hanging out somewhere, like maybe up here or over here, maybe way up here, and we don't see anything unexpected. An unexpected point will be, it doesn't necessarily come from the pattern or it's way off you know, all by itself up here, okay? So over here, down here, or way up here. That's something that would be considered unexpected, okay? So in this case, what we would say is we would say nothing unexpected. Okay, so we have the S for shape, the U for anything unexpected. Next one here is the direction. And when we're talking about the direction, we're gonna talk about it being either positive or negative. We read this graph left to right. When we read this graph left to right, we're going up. And so we'd say there is a positive association. And then finally, we wanna talk about the strength of the graph. And the strength is how close are those points to the actual shape that you described it? So how close are those points to being on a line? Are they far from the line or are they close to the line? That's what we wanna look at. 
So these points right here, there's not a lot of variation, okay? There's not a, a lot of variation. There are a lot that are pretty close to the line. This one's a little bit further. This one's a little bit further. But overall, it's what we call pretty strong. We have a really pretty strong relationship. So what I'm going to say Now, there are a couple ways that we can describe the strength. And people are sometimes hesitant. Well, is that a strong relationship? I don't know. Here are some different ways we can describe it, and I'll give you some guidance. So a very strong strength, what you, what you would most likely see is these points would all be hovering around the line, okay? Hovering around it. You won't have any points out here. Strong, that's what we call, so that's how we described this graph, where a lot of the points are kind of hovering around the line you can see right here, but we have a couple that are kind of further from the line. Moderate would be if I had a, a bunch more of these that are a little bit further from the line, that's what we would call a moderate strength. Weak, weak would be if it almost looks like there's points up here and then points down here. If I would draw like an oval around it, it would almost look like it's almost closer to a circle. Very weak would be, hey, I'm gonna point over here and over here, and I, if I drew a circle around or an oval around it, it would be a circle, okay? So again, we have that weak, very weak, weak where the points would be here. We still have kind of an oval if we draw a line, like, and when I say draw a line around it, so you could say, hey, if I drew like here, my oval around these points, that's pretty good. They're all, like we said, pretty close to that line. But if I had points up here, right, and down here, well, now all of a sudden, that oval turns into more of a circle, okay? That's very weak. That's what I mean when I'm talking about drawing an oval around it. Okay, let's move on. What have we done so far? We have plotted a scatter plot. We have described it. And now we just need to make sure we know the difference between an explanatory variable and a response. Okay, guys, so which one is the explanatory variable and which one is the response variable? We go on a run, we record our time and calories. We've already talked about that one. Okay, so time, that's going to influence how many calories we burn. That's our result, right? The longer we run, the more calories we are going to burn. Let's look at this one. We record the number of minutes on your phone after dinner and the hours of sleep you get at night, okay? What is going to influence the other? Is the number of hour, or the hours of sleep you get at night, is that going to influence how long you're going to be on your phone? Or is how long you're going to be on the phone going to influence how many hours of sleep you're going to get at night? I would argue that the number of minutes on your phone after dinner here, that is going to influence how many hours of sleep you're going to get at night. Response variable. I don't know why I put RS here. Response variable. Okay, your favorite food and your partner's favorite food. So this is based on an activity I used to do with you guys where we would rate our favorite foods and we'd give them a number, right? So you would have your favorite foods, numbers one through 10, and then your partner's favorite foods, numbers one through 10, and you can match it up. Now, so we would quantify this. Again, we can't do that this year with it being 2020. Um, but that's okay, right? So we would go through that, we would we would rate our foods, we do this activity, and then we would plot it, okay? And maybe we'll try it in a breakout room, who knows? Either way, how you feel about food, that's not necessarily gonna influence how your partner feels about food and vice versa, how your partner feels about food. And when I talk about partner, I'm talking about like your, your classmate, the one right next to you who's sitting by you, okay? You're not gonna influence each other's picks on favorite foods, right? Um, so there are times, and I've already talked about it, there are times when we can't tell the difference. And then you just write that. We, there's, we can't distinguish it, okay? We can't distinguish which one's explanatory and which one's the response. And there'll be more examples of that in your homework today. All right, you guys, I think we met our goal. We learned how to plot a scatter plot, how to describe a scatter plot, and then finally how to tell the difference between an explanatory variable and a response variable. Have an awesome day, you guys.